good afternoon and welcome to Your Hour. I'm your host, Cheryl Nutt. Really glad you could join us today. We have a lot of really interesting people on the show this, uh, this afternoon. So let's take a look at Today in History and then I'll tell you about today's show. June 1st, 1967. The Beatles release what's considered one of rock's greatest albums, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. The album's complex and experimental sounds make it a popular and critical success amid the counterculture of the late 1960s. 1926. Actress and silver screen sex symbol Marilyn Monroe is born Norma Jean Mortensen in Los Angeles. Among her films, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, The Seven Year Itch, Bus Stop, Some Like It Hot, and The Misfits. 1980. This is CNN. Cable News Network, founded by Ted Turner, hits the airwaves, introducing the world to 24-7 TV news coverage. 1801, Brigham Young, the Mormon leader whose religious followers settled what's now Utah, is born in Whitingham, Vermont. And 1968, Helen Keller, the blind and deaf author and lecturer, whose story is told in The Miracle Worker, dies in Easton, Connecticut. She was 87. Today in History, June 1st. Camille Bohannon, The Associated Press. We're coming up first today is author Rock Community. Hair, that's our business. We're Riverside Hair Station at the corner of 11th and Bidding. We're a cool, funky salon with modern styles and a relaxed atmosphere. Locally owned and operated in the heart of Riverside. Specializing in all hair services, we also offer tanning, nails, massage, waxing, and makeup. Gift certificates are always available. So come experience Riverside Hair Station at 816 West 11th or call 264-4807. As the day breaks, so does the news. So while you're getting ready or making breakfast, the world is changing, and it doesn't stop when you walk out the door. That's why here at Newsnet, we work around the clock to bring you the latest developments. On today's top stories, what's happening in the world of entertainment, last night's scores, and your forecast. So be sure to join me, Victoria Idoni, every weekday on Newsnet Morning. Closing a deal, that point when customers commit to buying whatever they're selling. Advertising sales agents sell advertising space to businesses and individuals to expand the public's awareness of products and services. They sell ads for online and print editions of publications such as radio, television, and more. Because their income and job security both depend on it, these sales agents invest a lot of their time building relationships with their customers. They research and analyze clients' needs and prepare creative, persuasive materials to encourage them to buy advertising. Many need to meet sales goals, so are continuously on the lookout for sources of new clients, making phone calls and office visits to interest them in advertising. Agents need to keep detailed contact and communication records and be prepared to draft advertising contracts for clients. They also need to represent their employer reliably and answer any questions a client may have. Good communication skills are essential for the field and a proven record of success in sales. Welcome back to your hour. Joining us now is Rock Neely, uh, and he's the author of Salt Fork Stations. And he's here to tell us a little bit about that book. You're doing a book signing this evening. Our, I do that all the time. Tomorrow evening at yeah. Watermark Books. Yes, I'm at uh, Watermark Books, and, and uh, I'll be there at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. tomorrow signing mm -hmm. books. Will you be reading any of it? I think, yeah, I will read a, a portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a, uh, uh, a two-page prayer at the beginning of it that I think I might. Uh, mm -hmm. So So what's this book about? Well, it is um, historical fiction, 
my great grandfather and his brother ran in the Oklahoma land run in 1893, and they settled on two parcels of land um, on the Salt Fork River, uh, Henry and, and my great grandfather Jack. And they uh, eventually married and uh, raised families there. And, and just there's so much history in that territory that I thought was interesting. Um, my family wasn't involved in all of it, so I kind of forced gumped us into yeah. every moment. <laughs> and uh, so that it works. was, yeah, so anyway, so, you know, the story is a lot more exciting than my family actually was, but it is historically accurate as far as the events that took place. Uh, the, um, uh, of course, the land run itself, uh, the um, Depression of 1893, the mm -hmm. biggest snowstorm in the history of the United States happened in 1899 in that territory. Uh, so the Great Arctic Blast, it was called four feet of snow and 20-some oh, wow. degrees below zero and 70 mile an hour winds. It was terrible, terrible. Three million cattle died. Um, a lot of people, too. Anyway, so then, you know, then they had the... Um, uh, the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which actually started in Garden City, Kansas. Uh, later, the World War One, and um, uh, you know, the Depression and the you know the Dust Bowl years, and so and then the book fi follows the family through two different uh, generations, and it uh, ends around 1970, kind of with the conclusion of the Civil Rights Movement. Okay, so what prompted you to write this? I, it's my fifth book. I wrote three, uh, I'll give a shout out to somebody here in Wichita that got me started, got me into this mess, so to speak. <laughs> so uh, there's a uh, writer, an attorney named Robert Beatty who wrote- uh, Oh, I the know Hunt Robert Beatty. So yeah, he, he wrote The Hunt for BTK and I was editing a book for him. And one day he called me and said, you know, I've decided that you need to write a book. <laughs> and he said, I'll, I'll, I'll mentor you through the process. And so anyway, mm -hmm. so that's how I got started. And so I wrote uh, The Purple Heart Detective Agency, which uh, still is my best-selling book. It's, it sells about 60% of my uh, numbers each year. So um, and I, I did two sequels from, from that and then a police procedural. And just about the time I was thinking, I should write something else, you know. COVID happened and I, yeah. you know, and I ended up at home. And I knew I was going to be home for an extended period of time. So I took two years to do the research uh, mm -hmm. on this territory. And I, I've been wanting to do something with it, and so finally I did. You know, I, I really like the idea of a historic novel that actually follows people, because that is what brings the history to life. Yeah, so the, the two families, um, uh, there's a book that I really admired called All the Light You Cannot See, which was about Paris and Germany uh, pre-World uh, War II. And uh, I took that, you know, following one, following the other, and then it progresses until their lives intersect. And I thought that was really beautifully done in that book. And so I did the same thing here, but I did it through time. So 1893, 1963 and then move the two families forward through time. Yeah. And they, you know, th so they experience all the stuff that different that happened. I think that's very cool. So you are from Kansas. Yes, I grew up in Hutchison. I uh, was uh, born in Elkhart and uh, raised in Hutchison. I went to Hutchison Community College and then to Fort Hayes State. Uh, and after that then um, ventured out into the world. So, <laughs> so uh, where do you call home now? Cincinnati. I teach at a community college, teach English, and uh, specialize in film, uh, literature, and communications. Very cool. So, uh, and I understand you have a family. Yeah, so uh, my uh, uh, daughter still lives in the Cincinnati area, and she has a, uh, a daughter, my granddaughter Lucy, which I'm very close with. So the other ones are starting to scatter around the country. We got mm -hmm. some people down in Florida and such, but places so. to visit. I know, right? <laughs> so not bad to visit Florida. Yeah, there you go. Um, so tonight at uh, I do that all the time. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at Watermark Books, which is a roughly Douglas and Hillside, uh, Douglas and Oliver. Um, it, it's a really nice facility. Yeah, um, you know. I've been traveling off and on for the last three months doing these signings, and I just can't tell you how important 
it, it is, you know, visible to me that it's the lifeblood of every community, you know, an independent bookstore that people can meet at and, and find what they need. When your yard needs a cleanup and you need help, when your yard needs mowing and your neighbor's yard looks like this, your shrubs need some trimming, Wichita Lawn Care does it all. Commercial and residential lawn maintenance, fully insured, offering contactless billing to keep you safe. Fair, dependable, and on time, services to match the budget, excellent customer service, a Christian family business, highly recommended on Google. Wichita Lawn Care LLC, owner Adam Fry, 316-393-4162. We take pride in what we do. I had to pack up all my things. I had to leave my home. And I never knew where I was going next. It felt like I never even had a say. But then you came along. Change a child's story. There's a child in foster care waiting for a volunteer like you. Learn how you can help at nationalcasagal.org. Welcome to Jim Morgan's Dry Cleaning. We really appreciate your business. And we are Wichita. Jim Morgan's Fine Dry Cleaning is a full service dry cleaner and shirt laundry specializing in high quality and friendly customer service. We pay close attention to details throughout the entire dry cleaning process. And with over 30 years of experience in the industry, your garments will be clean and pressed to perfection. Jim Morgan's Fine Dry Cleaning is truly a full service dry cleaner. We clean anything from suits, dresses, trousers, comforters to draperies. What separates Jim Morgan's fine dry cleaning from the other dry cleaners is we only have one location and Jim is here to wait on you personally and answer any questions, whether you're in our store or on the telephone. Jim, make sure personally that your special requests are taken care of. Now is Eric Litweiler from MHA, which is Mental Health Association of South Central Kansas, and you wanted to talk today about awareness. Yeah, kind of how to um, how to address in, in, a, in a real time scenario how to address uh, mental health crises as we see them. Mm -hmm. um, I thought of it because I just it seems like over the last few months I've been spending so much more time downtown than in the past. Yeah. Um, and talking with people who either work downtown or who live downtown, and that seems to be the the, the most common question that I get anymore, whether it's a, a speaking engagement or just in a, in a conversation. Oh, you know, I, someone knocked on my door or someone came up to my office or someone walked into the building, um, obviously going through a mental health crisis, what should I do? And it just seems like I get those questions so often now, and so it seemed like a good time to kind of address those issues. So what should you do? <laughs> well, the, you know, the answer to that question depends a lot on, on the situation. Um, you know, if someone comes knocking on your door at 10 o'clock at night, um, and is going through a mental health crisis, I think first of all the person has to decide how comfortable they are opening the door and inviting somebody in. Honestly, and maybe this is not the right thing to say, but I'm not entirely sure I'd feel comfortable in that situation. Well, yeah, and, and it depends too on, do you know the person or is sure, it a stranger? Sure, absolutely. And oftentimes I think it tends to be strangers in these scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are mental health facilities that um, are available to address those kind of situations. I mean, ComCare, for instance, has a 24-hour crisis line. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you call that line at 10 o'clock at night because someone's standing on your front stoop and going through a mental health crisis, the problem with those situations is they're going to say, well, yes, we have a facility, here's the address. They're not going to come and pick that person up. Right. Um, so now you've got someone going through a mental health crisis, standing on your front porch, you're in the living room talking to ComCare on the phone, and they're telling you where to take the person. I'm not going to take that person somewhere. Yeah. Um, 
So in those situations, the, the downside of those facilities is it's incumbent upon you to figure out how to get that person there. Do you care enough about that person to get them there? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the default setting, of course, I think that we all do is we call 911. Right. Now, yes, if 911 actually, if a police car comes and, and gets that person, yes, they can take them to a 24-hour crisis facility. But the problem is we have to know the right way to tell the police what's going on. Mm -hmm. First of all, the police are law enforcement and that person is not breaking the law. Right. So if we just call 911 and say, there's someone on my front porch, the police are gonna, call, gonna pull up with guns drawn, lights flashing, sirens blaring, mm -hmm. the person's already in the midst of a crisis, yeah. that situation is not gonna make anything better for anybody. Right. So. In those situations, if we call the police, I want people to be aware of the resources the police has. So, for instance, there is, I believe still, it was a pilot program at Amaya Longwell that I believe still exists, which is called ICT-1. This is a van. Uh, it has a paramedic, it has a police officer, it has a social worker. So, if it's not an emergency, if no one's committing a crime, yeah. and I call the police, I want people to be aware, be able to say, this person was going through a mental health crisis, they're not posing any threat, please send ICT-1. Okay. The van will pull up, the social worker will be there to try to talk the person down, the paramedic will make sure that they're safe, the van can transport that person to 24-hour emergency crisis care, whether it's in a hospital or a calm care facility or whatever else. Okay. Um, the other resource that the police has is called the CIT team, stands for Crisis Intervention Team. Okay. And we actually had this situation at work uh, just a few months ago where a gentleman was having a crisis in our parking lot. Uh, we're obviously fully staffed with therapists <laughs> who know how to deal with mental health crises, and yet there were extenuating circumstances where we called the police as well. But we made a point of saying send an interpreter and send the CIT team. So again, in, in that situation where we told them what was going on, we told them what to expect uh -huh. when they pulled up to our facility, they knew not to come with sirens blowing right. and lights flashing. They knew how to handle that situation because crisis intervention teams are specifically trained to deal with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. But again, if I just saw someone on my front porch and I called the police, they wouldn't know to send ICT when they wouldn't know to send the CIT team. They would just send a, a squad car. So it's important to know how to talk to police when we're having this kind of a situation in our offices, in our lobbies, in our living rooms, whatever it may be. Well, and part of the problem is possibly the person who's calling the police <coughs> is already excited right? because they've got this situation to deal sure. with and they, and they don't know how. They don't know how. That's exactly so they're already right. excited and that translates in their voice when they call 911 and so yeah, they're not going to, they're, they're probably not going to explain the situation. Yeah, that's certainly a concern, although, you know, again, going back, and this is just me, this is anecdotal, but if I had that situation, I said, say, you know, stay here on the front stoop, I'm going to go in the house, and I'm going to call someone who can help you. If they're outside, and I'm inside, and I have a door, presumably a locked door between us, I don't have to be excited. I don't have to demonstrate that, that anxiety in, right. in, in my, the phone call that I make. I can simply explain to them the facts. I think a 911 operator would probably tell you when you call, convey the facts. Mm -hmm. The facts are, I have a person, he's not posing a threat, he's right outside my door, I'm inside where it's safe, everything is fine. And I think the 911 operator at that point knows how to handle that situation, knows to send a social worker, knows to send a CIT team member, mm -hmm. something along those lines. Yeah. Well, and I think what we need to do is make the public more aware of yeah. those facilities or Absolutely. those uh, resources. Right, yeah. Now, the other thing, I know we're running low on time, but I know I've talked before about the, the crisis cards, the mental health crisis cards yes. that MHA offers. That's another thing. You know, they may not be coming up to your office or into your living room. They may be walking down the street. And if you see someone walking down the street, again, not committing a crime, mm -hmm. just obviously in the midst of a mental health crisis, um, you know, hopefully we'll reach the point at some point where those little mental health crisis cards, uh, someone will be handing one to you. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, if you haven't seen these in the library system, the, the mayor's office has them, a, a number of businesses around the city now have set, I know they're at Reverie, for instance, um, a stack of those mental health crisis cards, and we really want people to carry those around. Can you bring me some? I can bring you some, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, but it'll just say, if you look at the card, it'll say, if I've handed you this card, I need your help. Mm -hmm. 
And it's going to have the person's name, their mental health situation, the name of their doctor, the name of their spouse or a friend. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at that card and you can say, oh, this is Bob. Bob's having a panic attack. So now I don't have to call the police and yeah. have them come up with, with sirens. I can just call Bob's doctor, I can call Bob's spouse or Bob's friend uh -huh. and let them know, hey, I'm at the corner of, you know, Douglas and whatever, and I have your friend Bob here, he's, he's in the midst of a mental health crisis, what should I do, or can you come and pick him up, or what should I, how should I handle this situation? Because again, Bob's not committing a crime. Right. You can just tell that Bob's in the midst of a mental health crisis, he's handed you the card indicating that he's in the midst of a crisis, but he's also given you the resources to know how to handle that situation, yeah. rather than call 911 and waste police officers' time, paramedics' time, ambulances' time, emergency room time, you know how to handle that by making two calls on the card that he gave to you. Yeah, that's a great idea. Much better way of handling this. Every weekend, ride with Get TV's posse. I'm selling my horse. Laredo. You're looking for trouble. The Bolt Brothers. Here come the brides. Hondo. I got a job to do. Casey Jones. Father Murphy. <laughs> Hawkeye. I'll find him. Maverick. What do I have to do? And Walker. Just tell me when and where. Weekends under the big sky. All weekend, every weekend on Get TV. Each weekend on KCTU 5.2. I'm Morris Langley, Chief Meteorologist at NewsNet. Madden NewsNet is working around the clock to bring you the latest weather conditions right where you live and around the country. We're using the latest technology to bring you those conditions. If it's rainy, sunny, or even severe, you'll be prepared. Tune into NewsNet for the latest weather forecast at 12 and 42 past the hour around the clock, only on NewsNet. Eight years ago, my daughter called to say she was expecting our first grandchild. But I never actually heard her say that. And the first time my granddaughter called me Papa, I didn't hear that one either. Can you imagine? Oh, I know I lost some of my hearing, but I was embarrassed, too stubborn to admit that. For Father's Day a few years ago, Gina and Ryan bought me a nano hearing aid. And my precious Ryan, I love hearing her call me Papa. I love hearing everything again. What have you not heard by not wearing a hearing aid? You're going to have many more special moments in your life. Don't miss hearing a single one of them. Call Nano. Order your full pair of hearing aids for only $297. 1-800-279-6804. Make today the day you finally start hearing better again with Nano hearing aids. 1-800-279-6804. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, we are back, and it is a wonderful, rainy, stormy day in which I love it, and I know all of you are trying to figure out, is it really festival going to happen and everything? You know they're going to go on in the rain or without the rain. It's going to happen. But when it does start raining, you get this loveliness. So I thank you for that. <laughs> but let me just tell you, okay, everyone knows that I work with child support enforcement. It seems like every two months, or maybe every three months, I get calls again about child support. Can you talk about child support? I don't mind doing it at all, but I'm gonna give you a quick overview, and then when you have issues with, as it relates to child support enforcement, I want you to contact the Central County uh, Court Trustee. The Court Trustees are the individuals that are assigned to represent the custodial parent. If you are, if a custodial parent has put you up for child support, that means that case is registered with the court trustee's office. If it's registered with the court trustee's office, the attorneys and their paralegals for the court trustee's office will be the one that will compute all the paperwork for the absent, I mean, for the custodial parent to tell them how much child support you should be getting based upon the income for which they know or they have in front of them or the information that they've been given that you are making. If 
you do not have counsel, you probably want to seek you a family law counsel or you can go it pro bono. Pro bono means that you're going to stand in front of the judge and the court and you're going to explain why you shouldn't be put up for child support or if you uh, are not making enough money and you want it reduced or you want to decrease the amount they're asking for a decrease. If you want the amount asking that being asked, then you're going to have to file a motion for reduction of child support enforcement. Okay, then judge is not just going to stand there and let you talk about, well, I only make $600 a month and child support is $450, what am I to live on? File a motion. The judge is not going to address your answer like that because the judge is sitting there being impartial, listening to everything, but he has legal documents or she has legal documents in front of him right now that says this is what you should be paying. Okay, if you know that you can't do it, you file a motion for reduction. You don't have to call the Child Support Enforcement Office, which is the trustee, and say, well, I can't afford to pay this much. Because guess what? The court trustee is going to tell you, well, you need to get your counsel or whatever because you're scheduled to pay this, and that payment is to be made into the Kansas Payment Center on um, such and such and such and such. If you don't pay it, it continues to build. This is called arrearages. So the more you don't pay, that back child support is going up and up and up and up. So whereas you had an arrearages because you couldn't pay because of whatever reason it was $1,000 and you haven't been paying and the months are still going on, that money's adding. So now this $1,000 has gone to $2,000. Well, I just can't pay that uh, back pay and then got to pay the current. Then you all need to have a meeting with family law or you and the custodial parent need to meet with a mediator and see what it is, what kind of agreement that you all can come to. Maybe the custodial parent doesn't want child support from you anymore. You don't know. She don't want any future child support, or he doesn't want any future child support from you. They just want you to pay what's current and be done with it. That is something that has to be uh, done. I don't like to say litigated in court, but it needs to be mediated and handled in court. That's what you need to do when it comes to that child support and you and a, a custodial parent getting on the same page. Yes, there are custodial parents who take the children and use them as pawns to get them in the middle of it, everything. And if you've given money, if you've given money, you've bought clothes, and you've done all these things prior to child support, that is not child support. That's your obligation. That's a gift, okay? Because when a parent has now put, that custodial parent has now put you up for child support, anything prior to that filing was considered a gift. It is non-retractable. That's your obligation. So you ask the question, say, well, I've been paying before all of this happened. Now she want to put me up child support. I got all of my receipts and so on and so forth, and that's fine and dandy. But child support commences once that filing, that paperwork has been filed. Anything prior to that is not going to work. So you may want to consider that, okay? It's sad that um, parents have to a man and a woman, a woman and a woman, a man and a man, however the child is involved in that situation. It is sad that we have to fight like that over money and it's really not even about the child. It really isn't. The vast majority is about, I'm mad at you, you got another woman or you got another man, or no, you will pay me if you want to see your child. Then they can't see the child. Now there's another issue that comes into play. Now you need to be filing for visitation, joint custody. You need to be doing something. We'll talk again. Are you a victim of a high-pressure or dishonest timeshare sales agent? Were you misled and confused with what you were buying? Did the timeshare fail to deliver what you were promised? Do you feel that you overpaid and just want out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we can help. We're Timeshare Compliance. Our team can legally terminate your timeshare agreement, ending the payments forever. With one simple call, we can help end the financial suffering. Call 800-230-3818. 800-230-3818. In a moment's notice, today's top story can change. The weather can take a turn for the worst. 
and one score can lead to the upset of a lifetime. That's why Newsnet is working to bring you the latest throughout the day and into the night with constant updates on developing stories and continuing coverage of the news that affects you. So be sure to join me, Remington Hernandez, every weeknight on Newsnet Evening Edition. Have old junk cleaning up office space along the line and wondering what to do with it? Give us a call. American e Waste Recycling is located at 716 South Washington. Phone us at 316-871-9858. Come see time. We accept all household water filter type business items and medical type items. Food pickups for schools and businesses. American e Waste Recycling is located at 716 South Washington. Your home is your castle and it's your biggest investment. It doesn't matter if it needs new exterior paint, new siding, a sunny new deck, a kitchen update with wallpaper removal, or new cabinets with a granite top. Your home can be like new with a paint job or flooring. With nine years experience and five years as a licensed insured business, Los Reyes Painting and Remodeling does residential or commercial work for a reasonable price. To get your free estimate to make your castle look like new, call 316-409-0002. Well, the last two years have gotten people uh, with a little pent-up energy and they're ready to get out and travel. But inflation has kind of taken the wind out of our sails. We have uh, with us today the trusted travel girl, um, Valerie Joy Wilson, and she's going to tell us how we can find some good deals out there. Hi, Valerie. It's good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Good morning. So... How do we pivot if inflation is uh, making our existing vacation plans disintegrate? How do we pivot if, if, we're, if our vacation plans disintegrate? You know, that's a great question because in travel right now, we've got this sold out summer. We've got a huge summer surge happening. And if, if you, even if you just, even if your plans seem to be going perfectly and you miss a flight, flights are sold out. You might not be able to catch another flight that week to your original destination. So a great way to pivot is to think about doing a nearcation, uh, especially with inflation and everything like that. Like ever, a lot of people are thinking about canceling their trip, but you don't have to cancel your trip. I love the idea of doing an RV trip, so you're not going too far from home, but you're not doing those staycations of 2020 and 2021 because I think we're all sick of that. We're all ready to travel. So a nearcation is a great way to do that. I love the idea of renting an RV without Doorsy. It's a vacation rental platform. And what you can do is even if you've never rented an RV before and you're a little nervous to drive it, first of all, the host will come teach you everything that you need to know, make sure you're set up and confident and ready to, ready to roll, literally. If not, though, you can also have it set up in a beautiful destination. So you're able to have that set up at a campground, at a beach, at a lake, wherever you desire to go. And you can use it as kind of your hotel on wheels. And it's another great way to save money because you're not, you're not spending money uh, out at restaurants every night or every morning. You're able to cook breakfast in your RV and kind of have a home away from home. And it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to drive it there. It doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to drive it. And actually, most RV, most RV renters with Outdoorsy are only driving a round trip total of 665 miles. They'll drive three hours to get to their destination, which is like a fun little, it's a fun little mini trip with that RV, especially if you're a new user. You're not going too far from home, so you'll still feel very comfortable. And then they're parking it for four or five, sometimes six days, and then just driving it three hours back. But it's a great way to explore a new destination. And what I love more than anything is I love to get off the beaten path when I travel, whether I'm on the other side of the world or I'm right here at home nearby on a nearcation. And these user, these, sorry, these hosts will actually be able to teach all of the users all the local hidden gems, all the great places to go because they're experts in their destinations. So it's really a great way to pivot if you are priced out of your original vacation or your plans go awry. 
Right. Well, and a lot of times people don't want to take a road trip because they feel like it, it detracts from the time that they get to spend, you know, doing things. But if you're not going that far, that's really not that much of an issue. Absolutely, and you're able to kind of use it as an anchor point. Let's say that you did have it set up for you and you didn't even have to, you know, you didn't even have to drive it. You can use your own car to go to and from other places, so you are able to explore. Uh, but also, don't forget, you, you have basically a house on wheels, so you're able to explore any place, and you don't have to leave your family or anything like that. You're all together in this great experience. So I really love that. That's a great way to pivot. Um, another, another great way to pivot is to just look for last minute flight deals, things like that. If, if your plans do go awry, of course, like we were talking about earlier, there's, there's definitely a lot of hiccups in travel right now as the travel industry is getting going again. So looking for those last minute flight deals, th that's a great way to also save. And how do you do that? Can, on any of those booking platforms or there's tons of different options for for things that will come directly into your inbox, following airlines on social media to see when they have a sale, going to those booking platforms, the, the big ones that we all know the names of, you can, uh, you can go on there and you can click last minute deals and you can see what they have available on their websites. Sometimes they're literally the next day. Cool. Really last minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I will, I will say, trusted travel girl tip, do not wait. Do not wait to book you know, your Memorial Day plans. If, you know, things are, things are booking up. Summer plans are booking up. Hotels are sold out. So if you are going to do an outdoorsy RV or you're going to book a flight and go somewhere, whether you're going out of the country or within the U.S., book now. You don't want to do, you don't want to wait until the last minute. You don't want to procrastinate because it is going to be a sold out summer. Everybody is traveling again. Everybody wants to revenge travel because the, this pandemic has, has kept us, you know, at home and everybody's sick of it. So everyone's ready to get out there and uh, supply and demand, it's, it's causing a little bit of an issue. So don't wait too long. So uh, can you give us the website again where we can go to get more information? Absolutely. You can head to trustedtravelgirl.com. I have all kinds of tips on my website. And of course, you can head to my Instagram, at trustedtravelgirl. You can follow along with all of my travels, copy my itineraries. And if you need some travel tips, you can just shoot me a DM. Yeah. All right. Well, Valerie, it was a real pleasure. Where are you going next? I am leaving for Jordan tomorrow. So I will be on a plane tomorrow to London and then to Amman, Jordan for uh, a, little, a little trip. Some of my travelers come, some of my audience, they come with me on some of my trips. It's called Travel Girl Trips. It's for solo female travelers and we'll be going to Petra and Wadi Rum and all of the amazing places in Jordan. That's fascinating. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you and happy summer travels. Hair, that's our business. We're Riverside Hair Station at the corner of 11th and Bidding. We're a cool, funky salon with modern styles and a relaxed atmosphere. Locally owned and operated in the heart of Riverside. Specializing in all hair services, we also offer tanning, nails, massage, waxing, and makeup. Gift certificates are always available. So come experience Riverside Hair Station at 816 West 11th or call 264-4807. Every weekend, ride with Get TV's posse. I'll saddle my horse. Laredo. You're looking for trouble. The Bolt Brothers. Here come the brides. Hondo. I got a job to do. Casey Jones. Father Murphy. <laughs> Hawkeye. I'll find him. Maverick. What do I have to do? And Walker. <laughs> to me when and where. Weekends under the big sky. All weekend, every weekend on Get TV. Each weekend on KCTU 5.2. Welcome to Jim Morgan's Dry Cleaning. We really appreciate your business. And we are Wichita. Jim Morgan's Fine Dry Cleaning. 
is a full service dry cleaner and shirt laundry specializing in high quality and friendly customer service. We pay close attention to details throughout the entire dry cleaning process. And with over 30 years of experience in the industry, your garments will be clean and pressed to perfection. Jim Morgan's Fine Dry Cleaning is truly a full service dry cleaner. We clean anything from suits, dresses, trousers, comforters to draperies. What separates Jim Morgan's fine dry cleaning from the other dry cleaners is we only have one location, and Jim is here today on you personally and answer any questions, whether you're in our store or on the telephone. Jim, make sure personally that your special requests are taken care of. Well, as summer quickly approaches, many are seeking respite from day-to-day -day responsibilities in favor of convenient and effortless vacations at dreamy destinations. In fact, AAA uh, data reveals that summer travel bookings have, in, have increased in popularity over the last year and are even beating pre-pandemic uh, volumes. And one summer getaway trend is all-inclusive vacations which take the guesswork out of planning and have been gaining popularity as travelers seek convenient, personalized, fulfilling, and effortless travel experiences. And joining us today to talk about that is Asad Ahmed, uh, Senior Vice President of Commercial Services, Americas for Hyatt Hotels, and he's going to talk about that. Hi, Asad. It's good to have you here. Good morning, Charlotte. Wonderful to be with you. So let's talk about all-inclusive vacations. What does that really mean, and what should we be looking for when we're trying to choose one? Well, Charlotte, I think you actually summarized it really well in your opening. Um, the essence of all-inclusive travel really is the simplicity and ease of everything that you need to do when you travel a vacation. So beginning with the process of exploring a destination, actually booking the experience, but then everything that happens when you land in destination, um, being able to seamlessly arrange pickup from the airport, get yourself to the hotel, um, all the experiences that you would have at the hotel itself as well, and having the ability to work with the hotel team or through the booking process in um, arranging and managing excursions if you want to explore the local market. So everything that you would typically look to do around a vacation where you're exploring a new destination or going someplace to relax, the multiple aspects of that experience, um, pulling that together very easily and conveniently is really the charm of an all-inclusive vacation. And then also um, having the ability that once you are in the hotel, most of what you experience there is covered under that pricing, um, which makes it a much easier experience holistically as well. Sure. So what are some of the top trends that you're seeing for summer travel? Well, Cheryl, we're really excited about what we're seeing for summer travel here at Hyatt because the demand is strong. As you alluded to with some of your data up front, even compared to 2019, when you look at Memorial Day, 4th of July, the Labor Day weekend, we're seeing the demand is anywhere from 15 to 25% above what it was for those same periods pre-pandemic in 2019. And when you look at resort destinations, um, those numbers are even higher, in some cases being 60 to 85% higher than they were pre-pandemic. So those things indicate that the demand is strong, but as I mentioned, folks are not just traveling and booking for around the corner Memorial Day, they're looking at the 4th of July and even kind of bookending the summer travel period with Labor Day bookings being super high as well. Sure. Got to get that last gasp of summer in before you have to go back to school or work. <laughs> so right. what advice do you have for travelers that want to get the most out of their summer vacations? 
Well, the all-inclusives are a great option for the reasons we just mentioned, and um, what's even better in terms of the all-inclusive offerings that we've got here at Hyatt. Just a couple of weeks ago, we launched our inclusive collection, which includes nine brands across different state types. So you've got everything from adult-only offerings with Hyatt Zalara or the Secrets brand, for instance, and then you've got much more family-friendly opportunities with brands like Hyatt Ziva or Dreams. And so those allow you the opportunity to really curate the vacation and the holiday, whether you're going for a long weekend or a week long period to take advantage of all those experiences under the all inclusive umbrella. But we've also got great offerings um, as many of the urban markets around the country are seeing recovery, whether it's New York, here in Chicago, Austin, Texas. So whether you wanna get on a plane and go someplace where you can relax and take in the beach and the sun, or you want to get into the car and get something a little bit more local and closer to home for a quick weekend getaway, we've got options across all of those different opportunity types. Very cool. So where can we go to learn more about them? Well, if you go to Hyatt.com slash offers, you first of all will be able to learn about all of the different brands that Hyatt has, whether it's the all-inclusives or some of the more traditional hotel branded offerings we've also got great offers for you in some of those destinations for our world of hyatt members for instance if you look at summer travel for participating all-inclusive hotels you can get five thousand bonus points on stays of more than three nights so when you go to hyatt.com offers there's a lot of education and a lot of value to help you really maximize your summer travel experiences so it's probably worth the research. <laughs> Most definitely, and book early. Very good. Well, Asad, it was a real pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be with you, Charlotte. Thank you. All these interviews I do about travel. <laughs> and that's the last thing in the world that I ever do. We took a trip in June to Telluride, and that's the first and last place we've been for who knows how long. We'll be back in just a couple minutes with a little more of your hour. Stay with us. needs a cleanup and you need help. When your yard needs mowing and your neighbor's yard looks like this, your shrubs need some trimming, Wichita Lawn Care does it all. Commercial and residential lawn maintenance, fully insured offering contactless billing to keep you safe. Fair, dependable, and on time, services to match the budget, excellent customer service, a Christian family business, highly recommended on Google. Wichita Lawn Care LLC, owner Adam Fry, 316-393-4162. We take pride in what we do. That's our business. We're Riverside Hair Station at the corner of 11th and Bidding. We're a cool, funky salon with modern styles and a relaxed atmosphere. Locally owned and operated in the heart of Riverside. Specializing in all hair services, we also offer tanning, nails, massage, waxing, and makeup. Gift certificates are always available. So come experience Riverside Hair Station at 816 West 11th or call 264-4800. Well, our live shows can be found on YouTube uh, at KCTU TV5, 
We just recently started broadcasting live on YouTube. You, they're also archived, so you can go back and, and look at past episodes, at least since we've been doing them on YouTube, which has only been a couple of weeks. Um, and we've neglected bringing you more of Dry Bar Comedy recently. So Ron went to YouTube where, uh, and uh, found a new comedian, at least one that we hadn't seen before. And his name is Chris Monty. Uh, Chris says to stop talking to people you don't know, or at least stop doing it, according to Chris Monty. In this Dry Bar Comedy special, Chris talks about everything from living in New York City to having his first child when he was older. Whether you're someone who's an older parent or you're just someone who doesn't like talking to people, this full dry bar comedy special from Chris Monty is sure to have you laughing from start to finish. It's a 24 minute file. Of course, we can't show you the whole thing, but we'll show you about eight minutes of it. So let's take a look. Oh, it's so nice to be here. This is so sweet. I'm from New York, so this is a nice culture change. <laughs> This is different for me. This is just like beautiful mountains and scenery. Even the people are different. You guys are so different from us in New York. You're uh, happy. You're polite. That's very shocking to a New Yorker. Oh, I'm on the street today. Total stranger. How are you? How's your day going? I said, what do you want? I'm from New York. We don't talk to people. We don't talk to people. That's what we say if you're from New York. And we don't talk to people. I'm sure some of you have been there. We seem rude. We're not rude. We're nice people. We just don't want to be bothered with you. Because <laughs> people say stupid things. I was on the flight coming out here, and the guy next to me was like, so where are you going? I was like, look at your ticket. We're all going there. So I get, I, you know what it is? I feel like the older I get, you feel like this? My tolerance for nonsense is shrinking with every year. I don't like the fact that we can't be called customers anymore when we shop. That's a little too PC, right? Now we're all guests. <laughs> so I saw you the other day. Will the next guest step up? I was in Dunkin' Donuts. I'm sorry, Dunkin', because we're a little too lazy to say donuts in this country now. I was in like a Dunkin' Donuts and the, the overly happy cashier was like, next guest. I was like, listen, pal, I'm a customer. <laughs> and he says, no, sir. He says, here at Dunkin', we want you to feel like we're your friend and you're a guest in your friend's home. And I said, that's fantastic. My friends don't charge me for coffee. <laughs> Fill it up, find me. I became a customer very quickly. <laughs> Everybody's in a rush. I'm not in a rush anymore. I was in a rush. We landed in the airport in Salt Lake, and they say, stay seated until we pull to the gate, right? And, then, and oh, 200 people get up. Everybody wants to get out the door. Everybody wants to be first. Driving on the highway, somebody's going slow. You gotta get in front of them. Gotta be in front of him. I don't wanna be first anymore. I'm older now. I'm in my late 40s. I've lived a little. I just wanna be next. <laughs> next is better than first. There's a feeling to next. You ever been in the long line and all of a sudden the person in front of you goes? Isn't that the best feeling in the world? You're next. <laughs> they even announce it, right? Who's next? That's me. <laughs> they never yell out who's first. They don't say that. Sometimes I let the guy behind me go. I say, you go. I'm still next. <laughs> I don't want to spell things out anymore, too. I was on the phone the other day trying to rectify my cable bill. You know, I'm on a phone call and they're like, can you spell that out? And you have to go N as in Nancy. I don't do that anymore. I just mess around now. I'm like, yes, P as in pneumonia. X as in Xerox. G as in net. Again, as in psycho. <laughs> you getting this? <laughs> so I'm married to. I'm actually going to be excited to be celebrating my uh, my third wedding anniversary coming up to my beautiful bride. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You don't, you don't have to cut. She's not here. Uh, 
I got married late in life. I got married at 45. To my, I was a swinging bachelor back in New York for a lot of years. And then I met my beautiful wife, and well, we're all grown-ups here. I'm not going to lie to you people. My wife and I had to get married, you know, because <laughs> she got dental. And um, the priorities change as you get older. 25, you marry for love. 45, a 401k in health care. You have to invest in your future. My wife is not only beautiful, she comes with dental eyeglasses and a $20 copay. <laughs> I put a ring right on that finger, I love you. Second date, didn't even know her last name yet. Will you marry me? What date does the copay kick in? <laughs> she's fantastic, my love. I love her. She's my best friend. She's a school teacher, my wife. She's a school teacher. Any teachers in the crowd tonight? We got any teachers? We do? Join me quickly and we'll applause. How about it? Let's hear for our school teachers. Hi. Thank you. I say thank you to the school teachers. Never cared before I married one. Didn't know about teachers. Now I understand about you teachers. I see it from the other side. For those of you who don't know or have a teacher in your life, I'll tell you, the job does not end at 3 o'clock when the bell rings for these people. There's lesson planning, there's grading of papers, there's aggravation from other teachers and principals and students and parents of students. Now I understand why you all drink. <laughs> it's fun being married to a ski too. It is. My wife's a wonderful teacher. But I, this is my job. See, this is what I do. I travel around this wonderful country of ours. I get to tell jokes. I get to meet audiences from all walks of life like you guys, and it's wonderful. But that's it. When I'm home, I, that's it. There's, when I'm off, I, I sleep to noon. I'm in show business for a reason. I work 45 minutes a night. You getting where I'm going with this? I don't do much. I'm a get up from the bed, go to the couch kind of guy. I sleep to noon, I hang out. I sit around in my bathroom, write a few jokes, make coffee at 2 p.m., watch Judge Judy. This is my day. And it's fun being an actual school teacher, except for the summertime. Summer's warm. Because my wife's a go-getter. Oh, God, wasn't my wife is a go-getter. She gets up, she can do a thousand things before noon. She should be in the army. My wife says, go say we're married. It's the summertime. She got off, and she's got shorts and, and sneakers, and she's like, come on, we're going for a power walk. I said, come on. You go. I'm going to take a power nap. You know, and she does everything. She's like, this is what you're going to do? She yelled at me. This is what you're going to do? It's 79 degrees, blue sky, and you're going to sit on the couch all day in your bathroom, watch television? But in my defense, my wife and I did not live together until we were married. So in that moment, I sat her down and I said, sweetheart, let me tell you something about me. When I was a little boy, the doctor told me I had a lazy eye. I didn't know it was going to spread. <laughs> Be sure and tune in tonight at 7 to Mally Broads. Uh, Kimberly and Jamie and I will be uh, talking to you, and we'll be talking about, I don't, haven't, haven't any clue yet, haven't decided. Um, I, I might talk a little bit about my trip to the dentist yesterday, because that was fun. <laughs> anyway. But we're not going to go there right now. And you can always call in and talk to us on Mouthy Broads at 316-337-5501. So anyway, we hope you watch. We hope you tune in. We hope you enjoyed today's show. We enjoyed bringing it to you. And we'll be back tomorrow at noon with more your hour. And tonight at 7 with Mouthy Broads. Thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon.
had to pack up all my things. I had to leave my home. And I never knew where I was going next. It felt like I never even had a say. But then you came along. You're watching KCTU 5.